I'm Nadia Sawala, a working mum to my gorgeous girls, Maddie and Kiki. Not forgetting wife to Mad Mark. And then, of course, there's my dogs, Chi Chi and Toffee too. Growing up, dinner was always a family affair. With my Arabic father and my mum's obsession with all things French, mealtimes were tasty and exciting. Over the years, I've begged, borrowed and stolen cooking tips. I love to cook and I'm always in my kitchen. And now I'm excited to be finding out about the fabulous family feasts people enjoy around the world. Ah! <laughs> Taking inspiration from busy households for simple recipes. During the series, I'll be hanging out with some fantastic chefs and cooks from every country imaginable as they share the dishes they grew up with and love today. I just want to feed everybody. Every one of which we want you to have a go at. Oh. And if that wasn't enough, they'll be sharing the ingredients they couldn't live without to help you along the way. Oh, naughty. So buckle up and hold on tight for my fantastic family feasts. Pick a quick one. <laughs>to the show today we are taking a trip to the orient to find out how china's rich history has influenced the cuisine we all enjoy across the world now we were having to think what guy can we get in to teach us everything we want to know about chinese cooking who else could it be but founder of the school of walk the wonderful jeremy pack we so both got really bad well, shoulders so it, we're going to do like it's a careful hug yeah we're going to do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just in case. You've done that one. And we're clearly and standing in the wrong way because this is my bad one and that's yours. So, uh, anyway, just let's not... And are you going to be chucking the walk around? No, that's your job. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll have to use the other hand. All right, so already loads of gorgeous ingredients. But first, get my juices going. Tell me about a typical family Chinese feast. What would you have? A Chinese feast, it always has to start with a rice. And the rice mm. is the carrier to the meal, but it brings it all together and it brings that balance of flavour, texture and colour together. Every single time we go out to eat, it's not just one dish for one person, it's a whole sharing platter of food. Anything crispy, and then always top it off with a stir-fry with lots of sauce to mop up that rice, yeah. For the love of... <laughs> I'm starving already. You know me, I never have breakfast on these days because I get so much food. I bet you're just as hungry as I am now, <laughs> listening to all that. Uh, let's see what's coming up. Jeremy's showing off a sensational street food called Yen Bing for breakfast. I'm making a meal out of one of my favourite Chinese starters, prawn toast with smack cucumber salad and pork wontons. For dinner, Jeremy's using his mum's clay pot to create a beautiful chicken dish and he's teaching me the rules of the wok. And I'm finishing off the feast with the nation's favourite Chinese dessert. I wonder what Jeremy will have to say about that. Banana fritters with a sawala twist. Oh, I'm so excited about today, I can't tell you. Now, China, I've been to China, amazing place. Whereabouts did you go? I went to Shanghai. Shanghai. Oh, that is really bustling, isn't it? Everywhere in China, they have this dish called jianbing, which is basically kind of like a, a Chinese breakfast burrito. This is kind of like an eggy crepe with mm. loads of fillings and whatever you want inside, but it's a savoury crepe. Yum. Let's yeah. do it. This is just plain flour, and we're just going to mix it with a bit of salt and some water. What we're looking for is a kind of, sort of double cream consistency okay. batter. So, you want to get enough water in there so it doesn't get clumpy and lumpy, mm -hmm. yeah? You're going on the streets of China, you'll, you'll sort of find things like frankfurters and really? crispy one-ton skins. We've got some frankfurters in here, frankfurters. actually. You get lots of different oh, ingredients. And there is definitely, especially in, like, big cities in China, there's a load of influence from the West. Uh-huh. You can kind of put whatever you want into this type of pancake. Mm. One-ton skins we use sort of more traditionally. They're deep-fried one-ton skins. But if you can't get hold of those, I just say get a bag of crisps and it works. Because cool. so, you want that sort of crunch yeah. inside. Then we can put either your sausages or frankfurters. We've got some crispy bacon over there. Shiitake mushrooms if you wanted to make it vegetarian. And then some sort of green veg. So we've got some spinach here. Spring onions and some coriander work really well with this as well. And I think that's about the right consistency. I'm going to start with some chilli garlic sauce. One teaspoon if you want it sort of mild to medium. The next is uh, a bit of this stuff, which is really quite weird. What is it? This is a fermented red tofu. It'll be very salty. Do you like that? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
that is, there's actually not there to be eaten how you just ate oh, it. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what we do with this is actually we kind of make a paste out of it. So if I put a cube of that into this sauce, and then you watch this, so it'll push into it. You see how tasty that is? And then the next up is hoisin. This is sort of the go-to for sweet flavour. Mm -hmm. So I want my sweetness sweet. to sort of um, overpower that saltiness. We're pretty much ready to cook. Should I put the pan on? Yeah, let's go. Let's get it. going. I'll make one pancake. Yeah. And then you can do yours and you can okay. put whatever you want inside. OK. So the first thing we do is just take a little bit of oil. Um, <laughs> right, so a whole ladle of my batter. I mm. want it low enough so I can actually swirl this around and get all the way to the edges. As it's cooking, we've got plenty of time here because we want it to sort of solidify a bit and start to crisp up on the bottom. Wow. Right? That's incredible that they do this as fast food. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should think it's going to be ages until I eat this. Some things are worth waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting to the point now where we're, OK, I might crack an egg in. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Push yourself. <laughs> right, OK, so my egg is going in. It looks beautiful as is. It's running away. Is that all right? Whoa, OK, yeah, that's fine. Let's let's bring it back, right? And now oh, you're breaking crack it. The yolk, yeah. Oh. And I want to sort of spread the egg around. You kind of want, like, a nice mm. wisp of, like, egg yolk and mm. white. Because when we flip this pancake, it's going to look beautiful. So it's starting to crisp up a little. Yeah. But it's not brown. No. And it's still soft. Right, so flip that ah! on, right? Oh, God, I, was, I thought I was watching my breakfast go over there. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. first things first is the sauce. Mm. And I'm going to brush that all the way across the pancake. Now we're going to start to sort of get in a load of these spring onion. We'll pick a bit of coriander into there as well. Right, one tons again to mm. add a bit of crunch. And then we've got this stuff here, which I'm going to put bread. in, which is a like Tianjin preserved cabbage. Quite salty, that. Just sort of spread that across. Some spinach. And then a couple of... I'm going to go oh, for... I'm but then go... we'll balance it back <laughs> with a couple of frankfurters. <laughs> I can't close the sides because I put way too much in. So I'm just going to go from the edge round and we're going to flip this over and try and roll that as we're going. My crazy gembing is pretty much done. I'm going to take it off oh. and straight on. Oh. Oh. Do you want some? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm putting my pan on. Right, remember, not too, not not too, too high. high. Very low and slow. Yeah. We don't want it brown. I'm going to cut A teeny bit this. of oil. Look at that inside. Ooh. Oh! Right, are we going to try a bit of yours then yeah, while it's cooking? We, yeah, let's, yeah, let's have a bit it. of let's yours. Have... I love it. It's so naughty in so many different ways. <laughs> Isn't it? The gorgeous carb, the egg, the yeah. salt, the pork, the salty cabbage, the salty sweet sauce. Mmm. Mmm. That's the sign of a good meal. Mm. He doesn't want to talk to me anymore. Mmm. Oh, look, egg time. You didn't get any yeah, mushrooms in yours. I can spread. Come here. OK. Oh. That's oh. it. Doesn't matter. Let it go a little bit mm. messy. Just let it cook. And obviously the hard part is then flipping it, but we'll we'll get to that stage okay. when we get there. Yeah. I think you're pretty much at a, o, o, almost a good stage to flip. When you go, you just you've just got to commit. Okay. Whoa! Hey! <laughs> Yapa, <Yeah, Lula. laughs> oh. Are you okay? Yeah, no, it's good. I think sure? I might put my shoulder back in place. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a bit of my sweet and salty sauce. Can you pass me the spinach? You want some spinach? Of my... yeah. yeah. Thank you, darling. Mushrooms. I'm gonna have the bacon. Oh, I think I'll put my frankfurter there. Okay. <laughs> right. Um... <laughs> I just right. love it. This is proper playtime food. Do you want, do you want food. any coriander? Moment of truth. I'll, I'll save you some space. Ah! <laughs> oh dear. Okay, it's fine. Is don't it worry right? about those guys. Yeah. Just don't tell anyone. We, we yeah. don't have to run down the street eating it. Not bad. Mm. Mmm. Now, oh, we're going to have a bit of a nosy round his kitchen. It's a bit like through the keyhole, but with food. When I was growing up, a lot of people might be shocked to hear that I really couldn't care less about food and eating. I just 
thought it was a real chore. <laughs> I grew up here in the UK um, and I just wanted to go out and play, you know, play football with my mates or just, you know, just, just go and do things. Um, and I thought sitting down and eating was just incredibly boring. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that kind of changed my, I guess, view on food was actually moving out to Singapore when I was 10 years old. I was out there, you know, for two years, but the, the, the change was incredibly quick. When you're a kid going out to, you know, the hawker centres in Singapore, which are kind of like outdoor food centres, where each individual stand makes one specific dish and maybe for sort of 40 or 50 years, that one chef is making the same dish. It's got to taste good. You know, it just is mind blowing. And that completely changed me. When I came back here, I was converted, full on foodie. People would look at me and go, well, how's this guy become a chef? You know, actually, when I was at university, I studied biochemical engineering with Spanish, which I think was the only person in my whole year who had that degree. And then uh, after uni, I went into marketing, but I did always want to sort of find myself in food, at, at least from the age of 18. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. After my dad passed away, my now wife, um, took me away on holiday and she asked me what I was going to do in terms of my next career. Because so I'd lost my job, you know, my dad had gone, you know, it was the height, height of the recession. And I actually had no clue. And she suggested, well, why don't you teach cooking? Because you love cooking and you're really patient and you've always been a good teacher. I thought, well, if I teach people how to cook Chinese food, no one's really done that properly sort of before. I then started building some little business cards. I didn't know what to call it. So I just asked a group of, friend, group of friends. We were around the table, a few glasses of wine, and then later on, uh, School of Wok turned up. So, you know, that's, that's kind of how School of Wok was born. Yeah. At no point did I think that sort of four or five years later, I would have a full-on cookery school in the heart of London you know, teaching what is probably now over the last sort of seven, eight years, 60, 70,000 people. This dish really reminds me of my dad. He'd sort of come home from trips abroad and, you know, he'd be cooking without us even knowing and we'd wake up and smell that deep, savory flavor of this pork. This dish, in Mandarin, it's called Dongboro. It's a really traditional Shanghainese dish. It's essentially a slow braised pork belly in fermented tofu with hard boiled eggs. Random mix of ingredients, but it just tastes like home. Mmm, that really takes me back. The whole thing about this dish is about getting that balance, crunchiness from the veg, a good bite from the egg, but more importantly, with the meat, it's completely what we call wah, or wah, W-A-A-T. We don't have a word in English for it. It's kind of like melt in the mouth, but still with a bite. Oh, I could eat more. Oh, I love that. I love that story about your Yeah, well, your I'm dad hungry just thinking dish. about the dish, to be honest. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> right, so I am, again, daring. How can I dare to do such a traditional dish? But I am, because I'm that kind of a bird, in front of the great Jeremy Pang. Hey, look. I'm, I'm going to make wontons. First, we need a delicious filling. Pork mince, spring onion, finely chopped, Chinese cabbage, bamboo shoots, ginger chopped or grated, chopped garlic, toasted Sichuan peppercorns, finely ground, sesame oil, one tablespoon of Chinese rice wine, soy sauce, bit of seasoning. Now, I'm putting salt and black pepper in. I've already put the Sichuan. Sichuan. How do I say yeah, it? Sichuan. Sichuan. Yeah. Sichuan pepper. Sichuan pepper. So I have never made wonton dumplings before. I'm going to start by just wetting. Actually, I might just use my finger. If I know we've got nice brushes there, but I just like it better. 
A little teaspoon in the middle. Oh, say less is more. Is that is yeah, that is that still a bit too much? No, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah, take yeah. a bit out. Okay. Yeah. Roll it over. Stick it down. A bit of water. Yeah. Stick them together, okay. and then I'm going to make my little collars. Oh, how Round cute. of applause, Yay. please. They've abandoned. <laughs> they've abandoned me behind there. There we Pretty go. Pretty good. That's actually. a very basic wonton. That's isn't quite it? similar to what I would call uh, our Batman fold. Oh, is it? Do you want to see? Yeah, do you want yes, to see the Batman please, fold? Please, I want to see okay. everything. Right, I'll show you the Batman fold. Right. Okay. So yeah, definitely less is more. So a teaspoon of your mix go round the edges. Right, I'm going to go centre over the top, yeah. and then I'll use one index finger to close one side. Right, and then oh. I want to push out as much air as possible and close up the other side. Now this is the Batman bit. So arrow pointing downwards. Yeah. And you pull the two centres up towards each other. And this is what right. we call the Dark Knight Rising. You see. <laughs> all right. Oh, you see the Batman shape? Oh, like Batman. That's cool, isn't it? And then all you do is you take a little dab of water on one of his ears. Right? Yeah. And then yeah. you overlap the ears and squeeze those together. Oh, that's really cute. So I'm going to get started on my prawn toast. <laughs> awesome. I'll keep making some dumplings. OK. Oh, I'm so excited for this prawn toast. Loads of delicious ingredients again. Raw prawns minced, one egg white, sugar, sesame oil, soy sauce, spring onions, chopped ginger, water chestnuts, finely chopped, salt and pepper. OK, I've got my bread. These are just, like, little rustic... Um, That's cool. And you never, Do you like that? Yeah, it's a bit of baguette, isn't it? It's a... Well, all right. It's yeah. a rustic baguette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, before I start frying the prawn toast and cooking the wontons, I'm going to make a smacked cucumber salad. Smacked cucumber? I'm doing a smacked... Let me help Sally. you out. That's what they said. <laughs> it said a smacked cucumber is what I needed. I know, it's a strange concept, really, isn't it? So have I got to smack it with that? Yeah. Show me. That's Show it, me. just smack it. What, well, no, smack it? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, I mean, you want it to sort of... You want rough lengths of your cucumber and you might want to take the middle part out. And then you literally just take your cleaver and smack it. Throw it in the bowl. All right, so can I use your cleaver? I'm not going to worry about de-seeding it. OK, fine. Because, quite frankly... That's too fancy. I've got a life, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Put me in my place. <laughs> right, so now I'm just going to smash it. Whoa! It maybe seems one, unfair. Maybe one piece at a time would help. <laughs> Goes against my philosophy, is this. But it's quite therapeutic in a way. Well, it? I know, but I feel like I'm taking something out. What, you think you feel like the cucumber's going to get angry? Well, no, no, not this isn't going to get angry, but I'm putting, <laughs> I'm putting into it a strange vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I now have my cucumber prepared, <laughs> and to that I'm going to add some um, breakfast radish and then we're having mouli, which is like a, which is a Chinese radish. Chinese is that the radish, right way yeah. To... And again, it will take in that flavour from the sort of sourness of the vinegar. Mm. Yeah. Uh, just a little garlic, tons, <laughs> as we love garlic here. A tablespoon of black vinegar, a tablespoon of soy sauce and a tablespoon of crispy chilli in oil. And a splash of sesame oil. Yummy. OK, are we ready to fry our sesame prawn toast? I think so. Right, I'm going to put these in, prawn nice size down. See, I'm a bit worried about how actually easy this dish is because I could find myself making these in the middle of the night. <laughs> People are salivating at home, aren't you? So, should we get the wontons on? So, this is really easy. The chicken stock's just boiling away and then you just pop your wontons in. You do need to give them a little bit of space, so you can't just sort of throw them all in at the like same time. Like you would time. pasta. Yeah. OK, so the dumplings are looking gorgeous. So now I'm going to put a spoonful or two, depending on how much yeah, heat we like. Yeah, careful that. That's quite chilly hot, I think. And then some gorgeous crispy fried onions. I oh. love these. They're dangerous. Really? Mm. Team effort. Wow! That is really good. 
Wow! Come over here. Do you want a bit of my toast? Yes. Cheers. Cheers. So good. Jeremy is getting his clay pot out and he's going to show us a fabulous chicken and mushroom dish. But first, I want to have a rummage through his cupboards because I want to <laughs> have a look at what his top five ingredients are. Do you? My top five store cupboard ingredients are rice, shiitake dried Chinese mushrooms, some sort of stock, so chicken or vegetable stock, deep fried shallots, and a weird one, Tianjin preserved cabbage, which is kind of like every Chinese grandmother's secret to Chinese cooking. The rice is actually a Thai fragrant jasmine rice. In Chinese tradition, you're either sort of classed as a fan tong, a rice bin, or a mean tong, which is a noodle bin. I'm definitely a rice bin, and that means that Every meal I have has to have that fluffy rice with it. So dried Chinese mushrooms or shiitake mushrooms get all different types. These are quite small, almost baby mushrooms. It, they're there for meatiness in a dish. So you can kind of braise it or slow cook it with some vegetarian stir fry sauce or oyster sauce and some stock. Or they're really good for making sort of depth of flavor without people noticing it's there. Stock or chicken stock, vegetable stock, fish stock, whatever stock it is. Actually, I really like the sort of bagged stock that's ready to go. But if you make it fresh, then any sort of chicken bones or leftover vegetables, even leftover skins of onions and garlic make a really good stock. Deep fried shallots, strange ingredient. A lot of the time in restaurants, it, it looks like these are used just for garnish which they are, they're great for, they add a crunch. But actually, if you sort of dehydrate any ingredient, it concentrates flavor. So if I stir fried this or put it into a curry, anything like that, you know, it will just melt into the food without people realizing that's, that savory base is there and where it's come from. The final ingredient, Tianjin, preserved cabbage. And Tianjin, where it comes from in China, it's got a really salty, savory flavor. So it's a punch of flavor with very little ingredient. I use it for things like minced pork mixed together, just with a little bit of oyster sauce and steamed for eight to 10 minutes with some rice to carry it. And those are my five core store cupboard ingredients. You're such a fang tong. <laughs> You actually say that really well. Fan tong. Fan tong. It's a fan tong. Fan tong. Yeah, exactly. It sounds like rice bin. Rice bin. Yeah. I think I am a fan tong. Yeah, I love you, rice. Are you a, more of a rice or a noodle person? Really, I like a double carb hit whenever I can. So what, rice mixed in with a bit of noodles? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, we see, we never do that. Oh, I know. No, I know you're offended. <laughs> 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 but I love the both. But rice is a great comfort dish, isn't it? Yes. It's, just, it's a great comfort yeah. ingredient and it fills you up and it's cheap. Yeah, and there are certain cultures like the Chinese or Iranian rice mm. I love as well. You know, there's lots Ooh, of... Yeah, with yeah, all the yeah. sweet Yeah, and there's, everyone has slightly different ways of cooking it. Mm. But this is almost like you do get that Iranian rice dish with the crispy potatoes yes, on the bottom. Yes, yeah, yeah. This is like the Hong Kong version of that, just oh. without the potatoes. Can I just ask you something and be yeah. honest? Yes. Do you actually like the crunchy bits? They're, they're the best bits. And with the chilli sauce that we're going to make, you drizzle it over the top and you get a bit of crunch, sort I'm, of sweet chilli sauce. I'm looking forward to sauce. trying your crunchy bit, because I don't really like my <laughs> rice crunchy. Right. So I want you to win me over. OK, I'm going to try. Okay. I'm going to try my best. Go right. on, then. So you've got your mum's clay pot, which is a thing of beauty. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it, well chipped. Yeah. yeah. And so is this going straight on the fire? What's straight that? on the fire. And, oh, and that's the great thing about chi like good Chinese or Asian clay pots, is yeah. that you can go directly on the fire. Oh, I had no idea. It's a well-fired clay pot. So the first thing's first, we're going to actually marinate the chicken. OK. Right. Chicken thigh is always better than breast meat, OK? Right, and the reason for that is that it's got little bits of sort of marbling or fat in it. Yeah. Fat is where the flavour is. Yeah. Unfortunately, sort of folks. Closer to the bone or it's surrounded, you know, surrounding the bone as well. So, you know, you've got a lot more sort of flavour and moisture in that meat itself. 
We're going to season this really simply with a bit of light soy sauce, some shouting rice wine, a bit of sesame oil, and some pinch of sugar. So just wash my hands, and then we're going to start to season this up with some light soy sauce first, mm -hmm. right? When now, do you use light and when do you use dark? Now, do you know the difference between the two? No. OK, well, dark soy sauce is a bit more caramelised than light. Mm. So oh. if you swirl it around its bottle, it's it kind of it sticks to the edges like yeah. a, a more sweet wine. Yeah. 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 Right. So light soy sauce is actually better for seasoning and oh. marinades, whereas oh. dark soy sauce, because of that car caramelised texture, better for Finishing. colour and texture. Oh. So if you want like a really like caramel soy, yeah, then you use a dark. Okay. Right. So when we're making our chili sauce later on. Dark soy sauce is really good for that. Right. Okay, so we've got okay. a light soy sauce. Yeah, it, and quantities wise, you could get a spoon and measure it, all right? But we always say that it, it, so two fingers deep in a bowl is one layer of marinade. <laughs> well, once you've got <laughs> the meat here. You. Right, okay, so. So, you, so two so fingers here, and you just keep pouring the, so pouring the soy. Let's say, for example, I flatten this out so yeah. we kind of can measure how many fingers. So here's one layer. You ready? Yeah. One. So you get that from one makes side to the other. No sense. Right? Well, okay. Do you have to sing when you do yeah, it? Of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> I need to do another half. So do you want to do the half? Yeah. Okay. Give us a half. Sing. Make you. Oh, we are singing. Yeah. Half. That's right. That's, that's one of the big half. Oh, right, I did a okay. one. Right, I did a okay. one. That's a one. So that, we've gone for two. That's fine. You're right. Uh, Please um, contact us on social media <laughs> if you think that made any sense whatsoever, and you right. now know how much let's, soy sauce. Let's go to t t tablespoons. <laughs> it, that's pr one layer is about a tablespoon. Of, Stop of, of, singing. Uh, <laughs> and get your tablespoon out. <laughs> right. Similar sort of thing, OK, but with your Shaoxing rice wine, which is the next part, which actually is a really good tenderizer to your meat as well. Um, we're going to go for a cap full of Shaoxing, <laughs> OK? Measured to the tea. <laughs> right, and then some sesame oil. One Just a teaspoon. One and a half layers. One uh... and a half. Right, the last The bit. full recipe <laughs> is on the website. <laughs> And I promise you, it will be with spoons. <laughs> OK. Four fingers. Right. <laughs> uh, a, a, a pinch of sugar, chef's yep. pinch. I would yep. say a chef's pinch is about half a teaspoon. OK. okay. So I'm going to go for one and a half chef's pinch of sugar. <laughs> okay. Right. And, and the whole point of that now is that we've got our flavour there, but we've got to sort of mix it in, get it, you know, get it into there. And we marinate that and get the saltiness into the chicken so mm. when it cooks, into the rice, that saltiness sips into the oh. rice. So the last thing we're going to put in here is a bit of corn flour. Oh. We'll start with half a spoon. What we're looking for is a nice sort of creamy texture around the edge of each piece of chicken. Now you can see, once you've got the right amount of corn flour in, there's not really anything sitting at the bottom. It's yeah. all sitting around the chicken. Yeah. So that means that all the flavour is around the pieces of chicken. OK. Wash hands. Yeah, here we go again. And then we'll chop a few things. OK. So, chicken's marinating. I mean, soy sauce is pretty sort of salty in itself, so you could leave that overnight if you wish, but actually going straight into it is absolutely fine too. Yeah. You know, it's got good flavour in that. The next step, we've got your ginger and spring onion to start off the base of the rice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the beauty with a cleaver, if you fancy sort of playing around with it, is that with a dish like this, you can actually just get sort of chunks of ginger and then Oh! Give it a bash. Right? <laughs> right, and that will fry really nicely. Oh, look at really that. So it's going to fry as a piece. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, I like And then you'll get, like, a crunchy piece of... Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you cook out all the sort of rawness of yeah. it. Yeah. You know, so, oh. Um, so you just want to... I need to get one of these. Do you want to have a go? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. How wrong can uh. one little movement be? <laughs> Careful, stand back. Okay, I'm standing back. <laughs> good. Yes. Oh, it's a bit too mushed. That's okay. That's good. Yeah, it's kept together. And it's kept together. Yeah. Like a piece of lace. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that clever? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Mind up. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. getting good at this now. It's quite therapeutic. Isn't it? Well. Yeah, no, that is. Because that could look so pretty if you just deep fried them. You could put them on top of dishes. Yeah, exactly. It's really mm. nice. And with the spring onion, you, you can use this for garnish, but actually more, I want to flavour the oil. So I want sort of good-sized chunks, and we're going to cook those 
together in the clay pot. With this dish, if you want to make it proper crisp base, mm. then you do need enough oil on the base of the, yeah. of, of the clay pot. These nice sort of bits of ginger are just going to sit on the bottom of the clay pot. The next up is your rice. Do you dry the rice after you've washed it? You, you don't have to, but if, if you do, if it is dry like this, that's also quite nice, because yeah. yeah. the water's going to come into it later. Yeah. Right, so rice is in once your ginger's nice and crisped up. This is important. You've got to sort of move that oil around that pot with the rice yeah. so that every grain of rice collects a little bit of oil, yeah. OK? And that's so that it comes out fluffy and separate. OK. Yeah. And can you smell this, the ginger? Mm, I can. Thing? It's lovely. Right. Water to rice. It's kind of one rice to one and a quarter water for normal rice cooking. I'm going to cover that with a lid, bring it to a boil, and then when it's boiling, we're going to turn it right down to a low heat. So I've got my shiitake mushrooms here, and I'm just sort of slicing those up, and we're going to pop them into the chicken. We'll give it a quick mix and just lift the lid mm -hmm. for me. It's important when you put your chicken in to the rice that you just try and do sort of one layer of chicken. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise you're going to get uncooked bits. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Great. Cover it with a lid. Wow. Keep it on a low heat. Next 15, 20 minutes. And then what we'll do is we'll cook it to a point where we start to smell it almost burning. Exciting. We're living on a knife's edge. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna wash I my hands. love you, Jeremy. <laughs> That's brilliant. We are now going to have our own little school of wok, where yes. we're going to learn things all wok. Do you cook with a wok? I do. I have on occasion kicked with a wok. <laughs> <laughs> cooked with a wok. I have on occasion cooked with a wok. On occasion, you've cooked with a wok. I, at one what, time, it, how I many used... bolognese's have you cooked with a wok? Never. Really? Not this kind of a wok. I've got a, a non-stick wok, which you couldn't do Chinese with. Right. But I did have a proper seasoned wok. Yeah, that which I is used... what this is. So yeah, it's like but somebody proper... stole it. <laughs> Why would anyone steal I'm a wok? I'm not kidding you. Somebody stole... Because <laughs> it was a lovely wok. I'd seasoned it, I'd looked after it, and so I didn't that's have a, it. That's going to be but... my next invention, a wok chain. A wok chain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm serious when I tell you that I have... I am re-inspired to cook Chinese food after today. OK, so well, look, this, is the fun, this is like the hectic part, but it's really sort of high heat. Just got to go for it. We've got your spring onion, garlic, ginger and some red chilli here to make a quick chilli sauce. The ginger we're going to bash lightly like we did earlier. Yeah. Uh, the garlic, much like the ginger, you just want to bash peel. Once you've peeled that, then just sort of cut the ends off because they are a little bit dry and then give them a oh. proper bash. Right? Three, two... What about the oil? One. Now pour the oil and swirl it around the bottom of the wok. Keep hold of the wok. And then when it's smoking hot, that's when all the ingredients go in. OK. Right, now keep sort of swirling it around a bit. Good. Now bring it back down on the heat. Now we can start to push in, fold in, push in, fold in. You see how much smoke's in there? Yes. Right, that's what we want, because I want this instant sort of sear of all those spices. Right, so you just keep that sort of folding through. OK, you okay. ready? Yeah. I'm just going to hit that pan and bring out that chilli. OK, right. go. Three, two, one. Start the sauce! Yay! Am I still wok tossing yeah. and turning? Yeah, no, keep it on no. the heat now. Sugar's coming in to caramelise. Yeah. Right? And then just stir that around. So do you always use That's a ladle? Done. Yeah, always use a ladle. Oh, yum. You see how quick that is? That was delish. And you see the dark soy sauce? Yeah, it's made it sticky. Yeah. That's the sugar with the, the dark soy sauce just caramelising mm. instantly. So it's just seconds that you cook the sugar. I suppose that could burn quite quickly, couldn't it, at that temperature? Yeah. Yeah. Right? So that's your first wok lesson. And mm. smell that. Oh, my! That's but, like the one that you get over the pork or over yeah. the lamb. That but that's, that's going to work one. really well with this rice. Yeah, so we just drizzle it in or wherever, whenever you want it, really. Now have a smell of that. Let's see if it's sort of starting to get a bit more earthy. Very earthy. Yeah, I would say so. Winey. Ricey. I'm saying it's starting to crisp up oh, a bit. It's lovely. Would you? Yeah. yeah. yeah let's have a look. My guess is that I think we're really we're pretty much there with the rice, so I'm going to yeah, switch that off. Yeah, there's a slight burning smell. Yeah, but it's not sort of burny burny. No, no, yeah. no it's not no. burny. Yeah, just enough crisp, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to give it another minute. I'll switch it off. Right. Okay. Right. 
Are you ready to wok? I am ready to wok. Yeah. We want this to be a really nice high heat now. OK. My Ginger garlic. In. Oh, I'm tossing. OK, onions are coming in. Nice. Oh, just like flipping the pancake. Yeah. Right. Before the green beans go in, yeah. you're going to push everything to the back of your wok. Allow enough space. Take a little bit more oil so it drizzles around the, the base of the wok. That's it. I'm just going to take a little bit because I don't want to overfill your wok. Yeah. OK. Bring your onions over the top. Green you, beans to Yeah, catch. you are a natural wok master. Because that's it, yeah. Because you, you, you feel the heat and you go, oh, no, it's not quite enough sizzle, yeah. not quite enough smoke. Yeah. We're waiting for that yeah. smoke to build up. Oh, I want to sear it a bit more and then we move again. Yeah. 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 Right? Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Round the edge. Round Get the edges. smoke. Oh! Right, at this point. Toss. Toss. <laughs> yes! Oh! Woohoo! Woo. Ah. Oh! <laughs> right, I think you're done. At the end of the day, oh. it, it's a side dish. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side of the kitchen. <laughs> It's very hot. I'm not mad about the crispy bit. OK. But everything else is divine. That chicken. This dish is, for me, the perfect Chinese dish because it's all about texture. You oh, know that? it's gorgeous, yeah. Balance of flavour, texture and colour in one, on one plate. Mm. I actually like the crispy <laughs> bits now. I want more crispy bits. That makes me really proud. Mm, it's so delicious. And next we're going to have banana fritters. Mm. Chinese? Yeah. Well, yeah. Kind of. We'll discuss that <laughs> later. <No. laughs> it would be madness not to leave room for dessert. And we have, haven't we, Jeremy? We've always got room for dessert. Yeah, but I'm a bit worried about you because you have done a bit of a funny face every time I've mentioned banana fritters. I, you know what? I actually really like the taste of them. I just have always questioned whether they are Chinese or not. Well, let's not think about it. <laughs> let's, just, let's just make them and enjoy them. And they're not just any old banana fritters. Yeah. I am going to make a gorgeous star anise. So I'm. So it might not be very Chinese, but I'm going to use Chinese flavours. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, Chinese aren't really famous for desserts, and that's yeah. perhaps why... So you need me. Exactly. <laughs> China needs me. Because <laughs> 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 I'm going to use, um, actually, star anise and ginger so to give a bit of a Chinese flavour. So soft brown sugar... Butter into a pan, super easy. Cream, yummy, yummy, yummy. This is such an easy sauce. So really, so you just throw everything in? Yeah, I'm bunging everything in. Nice. That's me, I'm a bunger. <laughs> and a bit of ginger, stem ginger. Oh, I love this stuff. Yeah, mm, I mm, like that. Mm. Stem ginger. Have you ever tried a, a, steam, a Chinese steam sponge? Yes. Yeah, and, Gorgeous. That's, and that goes really well in that as well. Star anise, in we pop. And we're just going to bring that up to the bubble and then simmer it for five minutes. Could you get Easy. an easier sauce? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So I'm just going to turn that down and let that simmer away and thicken for about five minutes while I make my batter for my fritters. So, self-raising flour, corn flour, bicarb of soda, because it gives now it a little fizz. Fluff it up a bit. Fluffs it up. Yeah. We like a bit of fluffing up. Chinese five spice, mate. Yeah, Do you, you want a question whether that's yeah, Chinese? Not, you know what? <laughs> I'm step back. <laughs> I'm going to step back. Yeah. Um, I'm going to add, instead of sugar, some of the syrup from the preserved ginger. Oh, you like that. my book? Yeah, I like that, yeah. OK, pour that in. Oh, nice and sweet. Yummy, yummy. And some sparkling water. Yeah. Can you give my caramel a stir? Maybe oh, turn it okay, down, yeah, darling. Yeah. Thank you. OK, yeah. now... Oh, that, nice. that's ready. Um, that's gorgeous. We want it just thick enough to coat that bananas. OK, so now I'm going to cut my bananas um, at a jaunty angle. Jaunty angle? Jaunty angle. Is that specifically? Yeah, if you're right. following the recipe. OK. We'd like a jaunty angle, please. Okay. And you're OK for them to be nice, sort of, big bites of banana? Do you think I shouldn't? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just asking <laughs> a question. You're just talking for the sake I'm of it. I'm just talking for the sake of it. <laughs> so that's looking good. Let's go over there and start frying. Right, OK. You can help me fry. OK. OK, because I don't think you've been working hard enough No, yet. no, no, no. Okay. So there, see how bubbly that oh, yeah, is and lovely and frothy and really yummy. Really quick, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, really quick. 
So, we're going to drop our bananas. So, you want... Oh, look, that's nicely coated. It's right. great. Drop that in. I would prefer I've just not to do all those... Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Except it fell off. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite oh. quick, isn't it? It's quite quick. Those are ready. Yeah, it's a bit messy. Doesn't matter. We can clear up afterwards. I think that banana was a bit big. <laughs> I can hear the kitchen fairies I'm not going to say I told you so, behind the but cameras. I told you so. Saying, oh, yeah. it's not going to look very nice. <laughs> I I, should I give you a little trick on this? Yeah. I've been watching this, you this out of the corner of my eye. This is a tempura thing. Ooh. And if you, like, sort of flick Ooh. bits of, like, the batter Ooh, over the that's top... that's nice. ...then you kind of get a little that's frizz. That's a good trick. Yeah. Can you keep your eye on that while I keep okay. an eye on my sauce? Because I think my sauce is almost ready. They're looking good. Yeah. They're, They're looking beautiful. awful good. And I have the most beautiful plate. Wow. This is the moment of truth, isn't it? Mmm. Mmm. Smell that I'd like gingery. to just eat that like that. Well, don't, because you'll burn yourself. Oh. That'd be silly. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> now this is when we could do with a, a bit of a chef scatter, but I don't think I've done too badly there. I think there. it looks really nice. I, that I, looks yeah, lovely. I'm going to... Uh, what, what can I dig in? I'm going to get go a spoon. Let's get a spoon each. Mmm. Here we go. Which bit are you going to have? Do you want that one? Here, I'll let you have bit. Mr Nobbly. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I lost the knobbly bit. <laughs> mm. That's very crunchy. Yeah, that's what we want. Oh, come on. Does it matter how Chinese it is? No, it tastes good. That is, that's better than good. Hey, if you deep fry anything, it tastes good. <laughs> that is really lovely. The batter's so light and I'm crispy. a big fan of that You want ginger. more of that sauce, don't you? Whatever go. it is, there but yeah, it is really good. There you go. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Wow. Mmm. You cannot deny. We promised you a Chinese feast of epic proportions, and what have we given you? Just that. Thanks, oh, Jeremy. What a pleasure. Will you be my new best friend? No problem. <laughs> Brilliant. Come on, let's do. If we can feast like this every day, yeah, I'm oh, a happy no, we'd man. We'd have to fall out then. <laughs> <laughs> Mmm. So there you have it. Jeremy's delicious street food dish of Jen Bing for breakfast. My prawn toasts and pork wontons pimped up for lunch. Jeremy's incredible clay pot chicken and mushrooms rice dish with that amazing fried chilli sauce for dinner. And last, but by no means least, my banana fritters with star anise caramel and vanilla ice cream for dessert. Jeremy, I have loved hanging out with you. Thank you so much for what coming. What a feast. Mm. A family feast all the way from China. Sorted. <laughs>